Dr. Manchanda, thank you very much for hosting us in your corporate office in Gurgaon. Uh, one of the things which has changed during COVID is that there is a larger amount amount of insurance penetration. Patients are more aware of their health, but on the industry side, while healthcare services has risen in terms of volume, there's been a lot of competition in diagnostics. Can you tell us what's changed? I think uh, there has been a change at, on multiple fronts. Uh, first change that I see at a consumer level is that patients or in general public is largely aware about their health and they want to proactively take charge of uh, in terms of their prevention of health etc yeah. so i think the testing in general is going up is one change that i see the second change that i see is that people are now looking for convenience earlier at least uh, patients would walk into our labs stand in the queue but it's no more like that they actually want home collections they want to book online pay online so I think convenience is another factor that actually has happened. On the business model side, as you rightly said, a lot of players have come in and we are seeing entry of e-commerce players. Mm -hmm. We are seeing entry of hospitals now getting into retail pathology and even some pharma companies wanting to come into diagnostics. Mm -hmm. So every one of them actually is trying to see that what strength they bring on table. Like hospitals generally have pathology lab on their own so the back-end synergies are there for them. Pharma companies believe that they have front-end connect with the doctors. Mm -hmm. So they want to actually see front-end synergies. And e-commerce players are trying to say that we are trying to give a very convenient experience and also probably trying to give it a great value for money. Mm -hmm. So I think on the competition side and plus consumer changing, overall penetration levels of diagnostics have gone up mm -hmm. in the recent past. Of course, this year, many diagnostic companies are up against very high base of COVID. But I think that will be behind us after a few quarters. But in general, I am seeing is that landscape is changing, both from demand side, consumers are looking at something different. And as well as provider side, they are now providing much more convenient customer experience than ever. But now that there's so much competition which has risen, you know, we've spoken about uh, full body checkup at 300 rupees. We've spoken about... Uh, you know, how one of the online aggregators launched at 100 rupees in one of the cities. Uh, what is the discounting like right now? See, in this business, if you study the PNL of diagnostics company, the reagent cost doesn't constitute much. It's a very large part of the cost structure is coming out of overheads. Mm -hmm. If you can actually do more test per visit per patient, mm -hmm. you are able to actually offer a better value for money. Mm -hmm. And in the recent past, a lot of bundling has happened and uh, people are now selling these packages. So one is able to give much higher discount than what one would be able to do on an individual test or panels. That's one of the reasons you, you see a lot of discounting happening. So what is the discount that Dr. Lal has to give now as compared to earlier? Uh, I think honestly, we have really not changed the pricing uh, competition. We strongly believe that in diagnostics, quality is very important. Mm -hmm. And if you look at overall healthcare spend, a diagnosis just constitute uh, five to 10% of the overall total healthcare spend. Mm -hmm. And we believe that uh, patients are fully aware that if they don't get this step right, the downstream cost could be much higher. Mm -hmm. So we have always focused on the core of our business, which is quality and making sure that we do a uh, we help our clinicians and customers to do a timely diagnosis as well as accurate diagnosis. But volumes haven't fallen. There must be a section of patients who believe that, you know, um, say, for example, an online aggregator backed by a strong name is probably going to give you reliable results. So have you seen volumes fall? I think the last two years uh, have been a little bit of a change in our base due to COVID and non-COVID. But my sense is whenever you have entry of new players, you're trying to offer uh, a great value proposition. Obviously, there is certain there are certain customers who would always try. And I think these guys definitely would have tried this. Uh, but of late, I'm also finding that we are getting a lot of feedback that consistency of results is extremely important variable for them. And we are hopeful that a uh, rise in competitive intensity will actually accelerate the market growth, number one. There will be space for many players in this industry. And uh, we believe people who are quality conscious will stay with us. 
You saw non-COVID revenues or volumes grew around 15% in the previous quarter. Do you see that number sustain? Last quarter, actually, we have had base advantage because suburban base was not there. That's one of the reasons why you see that. Uh, I think we are still confident of managing our growth rates, what we used to do pre-COVID levels. Uh, I, I do believe that a lot of competition these days is in metro cities, in large markets. I think now tier two, tier three towns are going to open up. As the penetration levels of diagnostics improve, we believe the volume growth could be much higher. Okay. You mentioned suburban, that's, uh, you know, the acquisition that you all made. Um, are you happy with the acquisition considering <clears throat> that uh, the margins are lower? Majority of the revenues did come in from COVID, during COVID-19. And um, the integration has had some hiccups. So, uh, there is a very strategic rationale behind this acquisition. Uh, Mumbai is a very large market uh, and Maharashtra state is even much more important market and uh, we found in our portfolio that this is a big gap and we've been trying to go to that market plus many years with not with very little success and this was one gap to be filled up in our portfolio and as I've always been saying south and west are two regions where we need to do something about and uh, this opportunity came our way uh, it was a competitive process uh, yes, you are right. So it happened during the uh, peak COVID time and we didn't expect that uh, COVID would suddenly slide right. uh, so fast. But so be it. But I think we have a long-term view on this asset and we are very confident that we should be able to do something. But where will margins probably settle up? Yeah, I'm just applying the experience that I've had here is that if you uh, get the volume uh, to a particular point, mm -hmm. margins will take care of itself. So I think we are focused right now just to see if we can really grow the top line. Okay. Is that happening though? Uh, not really to the extent that we wanted it to be. But uh, I think, uh, as you rightly said, any m &A has its own challenges to start with. I think we are trying to fix up that. Uh, we are in the process of launching a big central lab in Mumbai. Uh, you will get to hear about it. And uh, I think we're just trying to put all those building blocks in place. And hopefully we should be able to see some growth. More acquisitions on the cards? Uh, I think our philosophy of m &A is not to really increase the top line. I don't think we approach it from that perspective. We approach it from market entry perspective. Uh, so if there is some m &A which helps us to widen our footprint, we'll definitely look at it, but not just for the sake of doing m &As. Okay, so growth via m &A only if you get the opportunity. How much are you willing to shell out? Uh, I, I I think it depends on the asset which is which is there on the table. So it is definitely our part of our strategy to see build business through inorganic. And there's nothing new about it because if you look at worldwide also, most companies have become bigger by doing inorganic as well. So yes, but is growth getting tougher and hence diagnostic companies need to look at the m and route more aggressively in order to shore up growth? I think definitely diagnostics companies need to look at new markets. Mm -hmm. And uh, on your own to go to a new market is definitely challenging. So I think that opens up the whole m and Is it enough to just be a standalone lab now? The reason I ask is that a hospital has diagnostics. An online aggregator does pharmacies has diagnostics. So does it make sense to just do pure diagnostics? Now? I think it's a great question. We usually debate about this. What are the sort of adjacencies uh, our business uh, can have? I think the internal thinking as of now is definitely to see how do we really differentiate in a rising competition and provide greater value on diagnostics and maybe use of technology so that we can do some value added stuff. Uh, but one never knows. I think this is an open question which we keep debating as well. But I, right now there is no such plan. Okay. And radiology, ECG services at home, you've started diversifying a little bit or was that always there? See, radiology, especially the, the routine part of it has always been there. Uh, especially in our Delhi NCR, where we have a larger share of walk-in patients. Uh, they look for uh, uh, some solutions like uh, X-ray or ultrasound. Mm -hmm. uh, but in some places where we have more network-driven model, where we transport samples more, where patients don't come into our facility, in those places we don't have uh, radiology. Mm -hmm. But I think we, we do have, but a share from radiology business is right now very small. And I think that's one low-hanging fruit. You always see that, can you provide a 
a bouquet of services both on pathology as radiology mm -hmm. as well as radiology with uh, the kind of competition that we are seeing we're seeing so many new players who've entered the market do you eventually see it probably stabilizing in terms of competition or pricing i think so because uh, if you look at before new competition came in and you just look at three or four traditional players they were up against fragmented nature of the industry you had single unit doctor owned or a technician owned labs yeah. uh, that was not visible competition at all yeah. but now you are seeing players coming in and now competition is much more visible so i think within the organized now you are seeing more competition yeah. but i think the shift from unorganized to organized will still continue to happen yeah. there is a large space so it's not that they are going to take away market uh, from established players maybe some bit of nibbling will happen but my sense is the pie of the organized players will become much larger uh, and it will gain much from unorganized segment and second is uh, uh, though there is no hard data available but my understanding is that in tier 2 tier 3 towns there is hardly any diagnostics that takes place so i think as the competition grows and the chain labs come up they will definitely penetrate uh, down the pop standard You had mentioned that uh, you know nobody expected COVID to probably slide as quickly as it did. Did that come as a bit of a surprise? Uh, I would say yes and no. In fact, we expected COVID to go, but it sharply fell down, which is actually not a bad news. It's a good news, and uh, I think where probably some of us were taken a bit of a surprise that because the cost structure had built up, yeah. and immediately to pull back is little difficult. uh you had built about 17 18 facilities we had hired people we had also built inventories uh both for reagents and other things and i think sudden sharp fall creates a bit of operational issues and what happens to all of that inventory which is built up and the resources which were built up so i think in um, uh in terms of machines we have started doing now much more pcr tests uh, good news is that it's not only for covid it can also be done for many other infectious diseases mm -hmm. so relatively now we have much wider footprint of pcr testing across the country sure. uh manpower hiring of course you know that every year we have requirement to hire people there's replacement hiring i think all those people are absorbed uh, uh in terms of inventory on reagents we did talk to various uh, vendors i think we've all sorted that out now i think we are we are normal swast fit is around 20% of revenues and hospitals healthcare companies everyone's talks both speaking about preventive health predictive health uh how important a piece is it how are you all growing it i think it's a it's a very important piece and since you cover healthcare you study pharma and i actually clearly see that uh, diagnosis is going exactly the same way you have a prescription business yeah. and you have a otc business yeah. so where otc business you have very less play of a doctor and in prescription you have a too much of play of medical side right yeah. i think this business is also getting vertically split where uh, there is over the counter service and you order for preventive health checkups and that's not catered only to patients it's actually becoming a much more mass and that's really going to broaden the market quite a bit hmm. and how so, much is it going to be in terms of sales uh, right now it's 20% and i think uh, uh, i i i think it is going to grow and this competition actually is driving that piece much more uh, than the other piece how much do you expect it to probably grow what are the resources you're deploying towards preventive Uh, it's from the back end testing is same okay. i think the customer acquisition is slightly uh, different in this case it's much more tech driven much more online much more direct to consumer uh, communication is very different so i think we, are, we we basically have to figure a way out how do we really differentiate dr lal's first fit versus everybody else are we going to see an equivalent of an online aggregator app for diagnostics from dr lal's uh, so you can actually access our brand online as well so we have our own app but we are not an aggregator model it's is mainly for our own brand but something to grow uh, within that space in the yeah, digital yeah so space. we actually you can access our uh, brand and all online app we have uh, it works exactly the way and how much are you getting from digital now uh i see that number is uh, may not i may not have exact number it's but it's not only digital people do call up people uh, whatsapp yeah whatsapp there are multiple ways of reaching out i think all this can be put together as a tech uh, but i think overall net net it's 20% of our revenue okay well two years uh, of covid is done we're post covid now if you have to talk about business two years hence leave us with what uh, 
Dr. Lars will probably look like, what the focus is? I think there are two, three things which are very important for us. I, it's clearly given that technology uh, really has gone into the system, virtually every parts of the business. Uh, we are also seeing a lot of our business now coming from the collection center. Yeah. So we have to get entire network of collection center, phlebotomist, seamlessly integrated on a real time basis. I think that's number one. So far, a lot of focus has been on labs, but I think to me, this network of 270 labs, 5,000 collection centers, and 10,000 pickup points on a real time basis, if you can integrate that. Now that's number one priority for us. Number two is obviously keep widening our footprint uh, we realized much earlier, nearly about 10 years before, that concentration risk on Delhi NCR is very high. Mm -hmm. We've actually been just now making sure that we keep widening our footprint. Mm -hmm. Now the Delhi NCR contribution is in, in 30s. Mm -hmm. So that's one, and, and Suburban actually has helped us even further that now we have much higher contribution from West. So I think widening our footprint would be, would be another thing. Okay, okay. all right, Mr. Manchan, that's a pleasure. Thank you very much for joining in and speaking with us. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Cleanliness is the pride of our civilization. It is for the well being of a nation, a nation where sanitation is not just a service, but a right, the right to lead a healthier life. Together, we can make this dream come true because it is up to us. Join the mission, join the movement, join the change. आप एक न्यूज़ 18 मिशन स्वच्छता और पानी मिलकर लें ये जिम्मेदारी। Let our choices today be driven by hope and not by fear. Let's work towards a society where people are not prisoners of their circumstances, but active participants in shaping their future. a life without fear. She wants the opportunity to set the highest standards and benchmarks. She wants to be a ceiling breaker, a go-getter and a change maker. She wants to be the leader of today and tomorrow. CNBC TV 18 takes another very important step to ensure that gender parity becomes an undeniable reality. Where equitable gain Equal participation, infinite growth become the rules, not the exceptions of the game. Making the future truly forward. HSBC presents CNBC TV 18 Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective. Presented by HSBC. Industry partner, Fiki. Associate partner, Reliance Industries Limited. Making the future truly forward and charting a path towards gender parity. Five years ago, on diversity, we took up a CSR initiative at uh, Bajaj FinServe to say that, you know, employability in financial services in tier three, four and smaller towns has a big demand supply gap in terms of availability trained kids. So we started a 100-hour program on technical training for financial services. 70% are girls from low-income families, tier 3, tier 4, 75% of them get jobs, doubling and tripling household incomes. So it's a drop in the ocean, but if each one of us puts in our little drop, this will change. A mega initiative to make gender parity an attainable reality. HSBC presents CNBC TV 18 Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective. 
shining a spotlight on the leaders who are inspiring and empowering the next generation of women entrepreneurs. This is not a question about women moving forward. It's a discussion about equality. Once you have more women in senior positions, you will truly be able to build the highest performance team. Celebrating the stars of the digital economy and setting new benchmarks for achieving an equal opportunity world. When you have women at the top, you naturally tend to attract a lot more women. This is the power of collaboration, it's the power of community, what you're building here. A mega initiative to make gender parity an attainable reality. HSBC presents CNBC TV 18's Future Female Forward, the Women's Collective. You're still tuned into the medicine box. Let's continue our focus on the diagnostic space and listen into Fortis's plans for their diagnostic vertical SRL diagnostics, which in fact might go in for an IPO. SRL has been an important and integral part of the business, uh, but the PEs have been wanting to exit for quite a while now. Um, it's been even pre-COVID. When do you think they will probably exit? Do you think that you'll maybe go for an IPO? So we have uh, had an uh, arrangement where we had entered into a new agreement with the PE providers, uh, sort of, sort of pre-investors, uh, where we had uh, uh, agreed to a situation where by 2024, we would either go for an IPO or we would have an alternative mechanism of, of the acquiring these, uh, uh, their uh, shares. Uh, so that plan is intact. Uh, of course, uh, if 2024 we have to go for uh, 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 listing, uh, then we have to start preparing next year. Uh, so we definitely would... If they uh, find an exit, will you still list? If there is an, uh, uh, there is an alternative path, then obviously listing will not be there. Okay, so maybe there could be a listing yes. for SRL by 2024. Yes, yes. because we, we strongly believe in that business mm -hmm. and we believe that it can be built, the further value can be built out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why we were... But the margins are lower than uh, peers. Yeah, so it, see, this business has grown uh, through acquisitions and uh, uh, over the years, we were one of the early start uh, starters. Mm -hmm. So now uh, there are a lot of initiatives we have taken. We are increasing the presence of our contact centers, our places where we can uh, take samples from. And at the same time, we are also working on making efficiencies and rationalizing the lab network, for instance, uh, improving the TAT, improving the digital experience, mm. improving the home collection piece. Those are some of the areas on which but we are working. where there. do you see margins to, uh, margins going for SRL? See, it has become an area which is uh, slightly competitive. Mm. Uh, and because of that, uh, the margins are under a little bit of pressure. But we expect them to be about 20%, about in the range of about 22 23%. But slightly competitive uh, right now, you know, you have online aggregators, you have other hospitals, you have standalone labs really clicking at your heels at this point. How difficult is the diagnostic business? No, I uh, look, you know, whenever a business evolves and there are too many players come with differentiated models, there will be a little bit of pressure. But if you see already, these, there is some degree of rationalization which is settling in, in especially in terms of pricing. Mm -hmm. You cannot have a model which is exclusively based on discounting. So that is changing and because that is changing, uh, we are seeing that the pressure is relenting. Uh, how much it is relented uh, is for all of us to see, but definitely some of the steam of that early... Uh, uh, exuberance is, the hundred is rupee going tests. away. Yes, but do you think that uh, it's in a you are in a situation where you can eventually take some price hikes when it comes to diagnostics now? Uh, see, we have maintained the prices throughout this situation. The prices have not gone down, uh, so that itself, in my view, is a good thing. Uh, because in any industry, the aim is to get the prices down. Uh, especially in a consumer-facing industry like diagnostics, the idea is to keep the prices where they are. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but some degree of rationalization will be required. Maybe some of the tests would cost higher and some of the tests may cost lower. That was the word coming in from Fortis. Let's end the show with Apollo Hospital Sunita Reddy. The company plans to expand its diagnostic operations and is in fact also open to acquisitions. Are you looking at acquisitions in the diagnostic space? Considering what has taken place, you all have big plans in diagnostics. Yeah. Uh, yes. You all are looking at around 500 crores in terms of revenue, probably scaling up to around 1,000 crores in three years as well. Uh, are you going to do that organically because of the competition? You know, it's so easy and scalable, the diagnostic business, that you really don't have to make big acquisitions. It's like pharmacy. We only did one acquisition, but we have 5,000 pharmacies and we are the largest player. So I think in diagnostics, uh, maybe some small acquisitions the team might make. And the reason we do this is because economies of scale. We're setting up a very high-end genetic lab in Hyderabad. So it won't be the regular tests. We'll get, uh, we'll do the difficult complex testing, especially for oncology cases, which will mean better margins. But is that uh, the future of diagnostics? Because there's so much competition. If you look at the online aggregators, if you look at hospital labs, standalone labs, you know, 100 rupee tests by an online aggregator, uh, that's how competitive the industry is. Uh, what is your sense in terms of whether or not that's going to be lucrative at the end? You know, I think we've always differentiated ourselves by a clinical offering. Like I said, we are, we are a, we will be a player at scale in diagnostics, but we will have all the high end testing and that will give us some margins. So currently we're at 13% um, in the diagnostic business, which is a healthy margin. But I think moving on with, uh, with us opening out at scale, having created these labs, we have more than 2000 touch points. So I think 1000 crores of revenue and a healthy margin is something you would expect to see. On that note, it's a wrap on this edition of Medicine Box. Thanks very much for tuning in.